Have you found the chip? <laughs> oh, that's great. Can I have the chip, please? No, not that. I want the computer chip. Hi. No, the chip. <laughs> Just give me the chip. Thank you. No. Go to the library and rest for a while, okay? Yep, it's me. It feels like I've been butchering living beings most of my life. It's kinda what I do. But how did I end up in there? Let's back up. I was born on a character creation window, very strong and lucky, but extremely underdeveloped. My IQ was so low, it made a full circle and made me a genius. Makes total sense, if you don't know how math works. The place I grew up in was Vault 13, a big metal underground building. 9% of the time, everybody was kind and friendly towards me, especially when I moved things around the vault. When I turned 25, my favorite overseer said I won a prize for hard work. The prize was going outside to the surface to find a vital metal do that, my people couldn't live without. The next second they kicked me out of the vault by the sound of popping champagne corks. All alone I had no idea what I was doing and where I had to go next because the speech the overseer had given me was definitely not in a human language. Total freedom you would have said. I'm gonna cry I would have answered. Beyond the shut wall door I met other lucky ones whose weathered bones spoke in plain and simple language that I could grasp. You are doomed. Strangely I felt happy, my people thought of me as a worthy one, that's why they sent me, so I carried on searching. I'd been talking to the rats with my knife and gun, trying to get the info from them about where to get a metal thing for water. The rats around this place were not communicative types, so they scared the crap out of me and drove me to the wasteland, where I faced the reality. Boy, are you stupid and dead? I had to evolve, which means gaining experience and increasing my level. But how would I do it? That was yet a mystery. You're dead again. The first place where I turned up was Smelly Socks, or something like that. I couldn't grasp what I was doing wrong, but those townies turned to be more hostile than vault dwellers. Everyone there kept referring to me as a dim witted moron, that Brahmin's are smarter than me, and some like that girl Tandy just stopped talking to me after I told my name. But it was fine, I had never had friends, except for a talking screen on my hand, called the Pimp Boy. At least I was told it called so. Only a local scientist Seth, hey, hey, people. who was smart enough to understand me, gave me a task to kill scorpions in the cave nearby. He explained that if I killed those scorpions, I would become smart and strong. When I entered the cave, another white friend was staring at me. He told me almost the same as previous ones near my vault, but this time it was RUN BITCH! I couldn't clearly comprehend what he meant by that and stepped deeper to the cave. And then I saw those scorpions everybody was speaking about. They were big black dogs with pointy tails. They didn't wanna talk and after a few stings I got a terrible headache and pain in my body so I ran away ASAP. Fuck this. Suffering from ailments I was looking for help and entered the first settlement I saw. A camp of jacked warriors with pikes. People around there were speaking about somebody called Job. Everybody was looking for him because as far as as I understood this job was giving away money and, more importantly, experience. I started to ask around where I could find this job guy. And from the get-go I learned it was gonna be hard to find one. Every time I spoke to them they were laughing at me, so I kept away. After half an hour I finally read their names on their flags. They called themselves the Khans. I thought of them as great as my favorite hero from the comics about Grognak the Barbarian. So I asked for help with scorpions. Then I came to their leader, who said my new name was Dead Meat, and next he immediately poked me with his sharp spear. I ran again, crying my eyes out. It didn't feel like a prize to me at all. While running away accidentally hit one of them with my elbow and his head exploded like a watermelon. I grabbed his armor and the pike and ran back to the salty snots, the only place I knew where I could hide in the toilet being left alone in peace. There in the toilet I picked up a comic book with too few pictures in it. It was about survival in the wasteland. I didn't understand anything but pictures about putting bandages were quite funny. From time to time like a rabbit dog I tried to go back to the cave reducing the population of its people. But every time I was roaming the wasteland something or somebody was always knocking the hell out of me, proving to me once again what the real world outside was. In my journeys I ran across another lucky traveler who was squashed like a roach by a big kangaroo. From their body I picked up a stealth toy, the device that would make me a ghost so I would fart in the mouths of those who called me bad words. 
The other day, Pimp Boy said to me that my people in the vault were running out of fresh water. I didn't worry because of the amount of champagne they had would keep them hydrated another 50 years. Little by little I felt stronger by moving creatures back and forth until they stopped breathing. Then I raided the cave one last time until the place ran out of evil dogs. Seth gave me his thanks as a reward. That was when I didn't wanna cry, but smile, the first time after I stepped outside my home. Later I found wall 15, where the thing might be, but there were only red people out there, he used to be there. Also I dug up a rifle from the poopy chair, this was my rifle, there were many others like it, but this one was mine, I called it Crystal. I took Crystal, Pimp Boy and Stealth Toy for a ride to the cans. Like a moth which flies to fire, I couldn't stay away from the place, because that was the only way I knew how to be stronger. I learned that I I can't be surrounded, so I lured bad guys to form a line while I was hiding under the tent. The strategy was decent, yet not enough, and I stepped back to the shaky seizures. I definitely needed help. At the medics I borrowed two boxes of orange candies from the shelf, and they were extremely delicious. After a few minutes I got that clear consciousness like never before. Turned out the candies were mantats, and I could clearly read that. The letters weren't jumping around anymore. I stepped outside to speak with people, and everything felt uh, darker, serious I would say, and not so welcoming anymore. The smile immediately slipped away from my face. Then the guy who used to call me moron and whose mouth smelled like farts asked for my name, and when I responded, surprisingly he didn't tell me to bugger off. Instead, he was eager to share his story. His name was Ian, he used to guard merchants until one day he was shot to his knee. He told me that the dogs I hunted are red scorpions, a major threat around these places. Crap, why did nobody say it before? I learned about two important places, the hub and junk town. Maybe there somebody would help me with the water chip that I was looking for all this time. Then he offered me to travel with him for 100 caps. I declined the offer for some time, as only then did I realize that caps were something useful. Yet I collected them because they were so shiny, making these jingly sounds that sent me to sleep without a peep. Then I stopped by Arader's house, the leader of Shady Sands. He looked on edge, begging for help. His door attendee was kidnapped by local bandits, the Khans. I remembered my last visit there and I needed a professional, so I paid Ian. His knowledge and skills might have come in handy and we set off for the Khan's camp. When we arrived I didn't feel this clear Khan... Khan... this... This feeling anymore. Even the word itself sounded like an echo somewhere deep in my mind. The world seemed brighter and kinder again. I liked it this way. I used my tactics with putting enemies in a line, and that time Crystal and Ian did great. Sadly for the cons, they didn't. I saw Tandy behind the bars. Even though she almost shouted at me that she needed to get out, I understood everything without words and picked up the lock. Thanks a lot, it was rusty, so I just used my finger. A few moves up and down, and the cell opened up. Looking at my moves, Tandy blushed red for a second. Second. We quickly ran from the building to the Sandy... Uh... Uh, Sandy, uh, Sandy Shades. Then Tandy hugged her father, who later said that he will be forever in my debt. And then he unclenched his fist. At first glance, his open fist was empty. But hey, look, a waft of dry air he gave me was already a reward. Then I smiled and said goodbye to everybody. And for the first time I felt that people were really grateful to have my help, even though everybody was looking at me with sincere disgust. The next stop was Junk Town. I came closer to the entrance of the Junk Town and went through the city gates. The first place I saw was the hospital which is owned by Dr. Morbid. The guy could do some voodoo stuff and make my pain go away. But I also remember he kept a gnome in his basement, who prepared human meat for the shipment to the hub. When I was trying to check what was inside his black box, he shot me, so I acted accordingly, taking away his life and all the meat. Human or not, at least it wasn't talking to me when I was trying to eat it. The local sheriff, Killian, couldn't understand me and warned me to behave well. I carried on exploring the place and saw a couple who couldn't enter their house because of a squatter stray dog, which took up their home and kept them away. In fact, poor buddy just wanted to eat, so I gave him some meat from the morbid's basement. The fat dog stepped aside and let the owner in. I took a furry buddy with me on my journeys because he didn't speak, therefore didn't call me bad names. Yet he said his name was Woof. Then I visited the casino and that gizmo, the owner, told me to go to hell and other unpleasant places, so feeling unneeded, Crystal, Pimboy, Ian, Woof and I went to the hub. Do you know this feeling when you come to a new place and you understand that for the next few hours from everybody's mouth it will smell like fresh farts? No? 
Well, that's the vibes of this place. I've heard so many different offensive names I never knew existed. I tried to smile, but I just couldn't force it anymore. At least there, I found water merchants who were selling enough water to keep my people alive for another 180 days. I had enough caps to pay, so my people were safe for a while. Later we found a huge plate with two big-headed children who gave away a funny-looking toy gun that shot lasers. It saved my life a dozen times throughout my journey. Then having no idea where to go next, I was drifting around from place to place until I found teen men who were super strong and mighty. I wanted to become like them. The most prominent guard didn't want to speak with me and I had to take mentats to be on the same page. Yet I needed to be frugal because I was running out of sweet candies. The guard couldn't accept just anyone to their tribe, even me, so they gave me a very very important task to find out what happened at the ancient place of their worshipping. The place called the Glow. In a few words it was a hole in the ground, probably a big boom boom fell there. I took a rope and climbed down. Inside tiny fairies were flying everywhere and most of the time they were too pesky, pulling my hair out and making me itch. I found out they were called radiation. Thanks to the second teen man's advice, I took many candies of red axe. He said they would keep radiation away. There were many bodies and right weapons and the artifact the teen men were looking for, a tape. Mr. Cabot was surely glad and let me inside. It was paradise at first, I felt power in the air, those people called them Brotherhood of Steel. They gave me bullets and armor and one of the egg-headed offered me, as he said, intelligence enhancement for 3000 caps. Pfft, man, I made it alive so far, obviously I didn't need it. But he sent away those pesky fairies from my hair or what's left of it. Make no mistake about this place either, most of those brothers were mean too. Soon I'd grown tired of everybody throwing dirt at me especially of this guy, so I went outside to take some fresh radioactive air. My train of thoughts made me travel around until I stumbled across a creepy city, where horrifying music was constantly playing inside my head. The city was populated by mutilated zombies rotting on the ground. Some of them were standing like statues. The horror place was called Necropolis. Then I encountered them the green people, who made the rest of my hair stand on end. Since the first second I faced them, I knew anybody who sees them trembles with fear first and then respect. They were 7 feet tall, jacked as hell and almost bulletproof, and they were without armor. Taking out even a few of them was a challenge, I couldn't help but wonder how they became so strong. I moved deeper into the city in an attempt to speak with them, but they were hostile and attacked us at sight. Crystal, Ian, Wolf and I were outnumbered and too fragile. Eventually, thanks to sheer luck and a laser toy gun, we got rid of big mutants. They were guarding the entrance to an abandoned vault, where glowing zombies were living. Deep inside the main room, I was having a break playing Need for Speed Most Wanted on a computer, when suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a shiny thing. It was the water chip my people desperately needed. I immediately took it and ran back home. The way back took a few days and all that time I was dreaming of how grateful all people will be, that they would finally respect me and tell me how they love me. I entered the place and went to the overseer's room. I handed the chip in and the overseer told me. Oh, yeah. Hmm. It's like this. There is a bad place where the bad mutants come from. It is bad. Vault is good. Please go destroy bad place. <laughs> That was it. I received another task from the overseer. I turned up to my people who said their thanks, but the next second they'd look at me like I was nothing. That's when I realized they were using me. And when I was not useful, they would kick me away again. But my people were still my people. So I agreed to complete another task. I needed to locate the place where the mutants come from and stop them because they were bad. Okay, if I was going to infiltrate their base, I needed more power. I was looking for something that would make me stronger. I was putting down dozens of bad people, scorpions, red people, you name it. It wasn't close enough to what I was searching for. Then I found a place called Boneyard. I felt foreign and out of place, as always. There I visited the library looking for my favorite comic books about Grognak. I faced another zombie who smelled like rotten eggs. I just wanted to ask him about the comics. And I don't know either Ian's bad breath of farts or some of my five words offended him so much that he immediately attacked us. I was trying to stay out of the fight, but Wolf was too loyal to me and Ian was doing his job, so they attacked back. We were surrounded, I was just protecting myself and my friends. It was so fast and when they came to senses, they were all dead. I couldn't care less. I just went outside like it was nothing and moved on. It didn't make me stronger in the slightest. I needed 
something else. Then it struck me. I could be a little closer to the power of green people. I needed the Teen Man power suits. I took a few sweet man tats so those bucket hats could understand me and by convincing the technician and mechanic I could get one power armor for myself. From the talks around I heard about detest towards green people. I felt somewhat related. Everywhere I'd been it was the same way all the time. I mean hatred towards something they couldn't understand. Then I took the power armor and left. Soon I encountered a group of green people again. They beamed with power and then they easily smacked Ian and Wolf. Neither I nor Crystal, who was doing no damage to them, could prevent it. When I paid back for Wolf and the mercenary, I didn't feel sorrow because I'd already dealt with the thought that the world I'm going to live in is not for the weak. I knew green people's base was close. The concentration of them was too dense around those places. And when I entered their base, the reality hit me hard. They were super strong and I was shooting but missing most of the time. Yet, how could I miss such huge whales? It made me wonder if those mutants were supreme creatures who could even repel bullets. Of course they were aggressive, but I wasn't holding grudge against them. I knew this feeling when everybody hates you and calls you a moron or freak for no reason. I made it deeper to their hub through laser barriers, mines and robots. It goes without saying, the word nightmare is not strong enough to describe this place. At first I was afraid of them, but after fear came respect. Especially when I heard how they communicate with each other. There was no place for hatred, they were equally ugly, nobody was abusive and it felt like they treated each other equally too. Something I'd never felt before. I couldn't help but notice how the slightest smile was appearing on my face. Because of a silver lining that I saw, that still there might be a place for me. I found guards nearby cells, I had to kill them and then found a flower on a body, which was weird. Then in one of the cells I saw a girl, Sarah. I freed her but she was crying and saying that I didn't have to kill him. It hit me that I killed her lover. A human and a green mutant who were in love. I wanted to say sorry, but the only thing I could force myself to say was nah. I felt anger. I, being a human, never felt a touch of a woman, only of Gary in the warehouse of my vault. But never mind, it didn't matter how hard I tried, even prostitutes didn't agree to do the thing with me. They were just running away. I moved on as always. I found a man in a purple robe who was hostile and a super duper green mutant lieutenant. He was unbelievably strong, proving to me that there were more powerful green people around. Did they have any limits? Then around the corner there was a computer room with scientists in purple robes too. They were speaking of their god, the master. When I came closer to them, they exploded like the Khan's head. I like the meat fireworks! Woo! In the window I saw the tanks with green goo. I remembered the words of the overseer that I needed to stop super mutants. I took dynamite and the lighter. It took me half an hour to understand how it works, but I placed it near the computers and stepped aside. After the explosion, the voice in the walls said that the self-destruction program has been activated and I had only 300 seconds left to save my skin. I didn't know how much time I had because philosophy was kinda difficult for me, but a spooky sound was enough to make me run away ASAP. I slipped away from the building and after a few moments it went bang. I went back to my home. I didn't expect much, I just needed to deliver the news. I spoke as much as I could and described everything in detail. What news of the mutants? All of them? What about the mutant leader? What about this so-called master? He must be stopped. The overseer asked about the master, but I wasn't sure he was there. I mean nobody was kind enough to introduce themselves and I couldn't read those green letters flying above mutants heads. He said that the master must be stopped, because he will build the empire of mutants otherwise. It was enough, I was done. Disappointed I went outside roaming the wasteland. I went completely rogue and killed everything that was slightly hostile towards me. I wanted to release that anger inside me and become stronger, but it was never enough. In the end I visited Smokey Swords for a change. Aradesh was still grateful and I still said <laughs> Eventually I decided to come back to the glow because of a few blocked doors. I suppose I used to have this obsession when I couldn't go away from a place until I looked under every rock. I went down and repaired the generator and when I did so there was this big metal box I could communicate with. 
Jesus. And as you remember, I had difficulties reading, so I had to take mentats, or what was left of them. The computer's name was Sax, and it told me about the experiments the military forces were conducting. They'd created the virus which would force the evolution, aka FEV. It stimulates the growth of muscles, and increases brain activities, and other complex words I didn't know. After an hour, when I finished reading the first paragraph, I got terrible headaches and terminated the computer. Then I went to the lower floors and found those tanks. They were a size of a human and broken from inside. Only then it all clicked in my head. Probably it was a microstroke after reading so much, but only then did I realize those green people were the results of the FEV. I knew exactly what I was looking for. The forced evolutionary virus. I crawled up to the surface and went searching. I remembered back in the base, fanatics in purple were chanting for the holy flame, and they were not attacked by the mutants, which means they were friends. I needed to find somebody like them. I went to all places I'd been before. Nothing. Nobody could understand me. Nobody I could turn up to. Maybe only to the gut? I went to the hub and by a sheer obsession with stealing everything, entered the house of a citizen. I said, Cookie. He understood me right away and sent me to the church nearby to Dr. Thorndike. He could help. They called themselves the children. I asked for milk, but the man was ready to kill me for it. It was surely something worth killing for. Then I saw the doctor. He said that my state is beyond his healing powers, but the holy flame could cure me. That was it. The holy flame. Sure, I needed the cure. The cure against my humanity. The doctor was useless, but he gave me a hint. The children. After a few days of unsuccessful searching, I saw a cathedral on the horizon. I changed my clothes to be like them and came closer. They were praising the master and the holy flame. That was the place I needed. I started to ask around. Then I found my mom, who was saying she was not, but she was lying, I knew it. Then I met a mean doctor who cursed me tenfold, and another mean fella in a purple robe. I felt the same feeling again. Nobody liked me even in the place where I could find a cure. It was enough, I put on my power armor, took my laser gatling gun and came to the mom. I started with her first for abandoning me when I was a child. Those humans were no match for me. I fought and won the best, the greens and the dinosaurs. When the church ran out of mean people, there was only one door left that I couldn't crack open. I knew there was something behind it. I could smell the greens from that door. My lockpicking skills weren't enough to break in, but I had dynamite. After a few seconds, the door was smashed to pieces. I went there and saw the greens with stealth toys. They could be invisible like me. The next moment I realized that I got a fart breath. What a shame, they tricked me. Decent rivalry. On the upper floors, I met the death. The status lock told me it was the leader of the children of the cathedral. That was who I was looking for. He became hostile and I was ready for the battle. He didn't look like the supreme power to me, but at least, after a shot, he resembled God. He ceased to exist. I needed the holy flame and the real god. On the upper floors, I searched every shelf, closet and locker, but the god was still somewhere else. I borrowed some weaponry though. Borrowed because some of them will be thrown back to their faces. I made my way to the basement. It was an old abandoned library. It felt like a dead end. But while I was looking through the comics about Grognog, some weirdo appeared from the bookshelves and told me to get out. At first I agreed and made my way out. Damn, he was so convincing. But I returned and said no. So he had Attacked. Stepping over his ashes, I was ambushed by meat blobs covered with human skin. Although the creatures were strong, my motivation was stronger. I wiped everything out and saw the vault. I knew it was a good sign, so I entered inside. On the first floor, it was unusually clean, but on the second, there was meat goo everywhere. The greens were doing FEV experiments on humans. I didn't need competitors. Luckily, some of them went completely nuts, so I easily eliminated them. The sane ones were locked inside the cages. I opened them, and before I was able to pull the trigger, their heads exploded. The mutants were everywhere, stronger than ever before. The cons taught me that I can't be surrounded. So I collected the mutants in one room, so they could form a line, building body shields for me. This strategy worked, and they wiped out each other. I finished the rest with the weaponry I borrowed before. Then there was a tunnel, old, dark and meaty. I was close to the god. I had the last peel of mentats. I took it to make sure we will find the common ground. I turned the 
corner and felt something crawls inside my mind driving me crazy. I got the thoughts of the dead and torture. I wanted to turn around and run, but I couldn't. My motivation was pushing me further. Then, at the end of the hall, I saw him. Made of human tissues and computers, he looked supreme. He gave me the choice, join them or die. I chose the first and told him everything he wanted to know about the vault. Then they brought me to the tanks with the green liquid. I didn't see much, but then I felt it. I felt agonizing pain and everything I could ask for was death. I did think I was dead, but then came power. That was a story of Yep It's Me, who couldn't manage with human fear, anger and foolishness. Thanks for watching, have a nice day and... <laughs>